one local Air Force veteran said it looked like it's been carpet bombed. Biloxi's giant casinos employed 10,000 people and drew millions of tourists. Katrina took out Biloxi's biggest monuments and its smallest. Not even the dead were spared. Less than a week ago, this was a neighborhood of some of the sturdiest, stateliest oceanfront homes in Biloxi, homes that had withstood hurricanes for well over a century. Today, they lie in a vast wall of debris. Police aren't sure that all of their occupants escaped or evacuated in time. This morning, Christine Fox came to keep her friend Ida Punzo company. Punzo rented a top floor apartment, about all that survived in this old home. They've been spending the days guarding against looting, with plenty of time to think about the narrow escape. We are all right, we're still alive and darn grateful to be alive. And we could feel the waves roll up and hit the bottom of, of the house, that lower floor, and hit the back of the house. And it would, the, you could see the walls just rattling. And we were sitting in the hallway on a cooler and I felt, I felt the floor drop. And that's when we started running to the back of the house. They managed to escape through the back door. We're very proud people and we don't ask anybody for anything. And we would rather not have than to ever ask anybody. But the last week almost, we've had to find places to sleep, ask people for water, beg for food. We've had to depend on other people walking by. It's, it's very humbling. Humbled and grateful for their lives, survivors have spent the five days since Katrina in long, long lines for life's most basic necessities, for gasoline. Hi, I need to. And for a hot meal, courtesy of the Southern Baptist Convention, which got here early, tapping a vast volunteer corps from throughout the Southeast. Vernon Bottler is the team leader here. You know, this is a way that we can minister to the people by giving them a hot meal. I wish we could give them a cold drink of water, but we can't get it. Now, I understand that uh, our president has said that uh, they were going to send 400 trucks in, into this area. That'd be great, but we haven't seen it. All we've seen is people in need. For water and ice, it's another long line. Loud cheers greeted the truck's arrival, just in time for a rain shower, which almost seemed to go unnoticed. Slowly, supplies and help are beginning to arrive from outside the region. Until now, many communities and neighbors have had to make do with what little they have. That's his brother right here. Jimmy. Jimmy. At the Main Street Missionary Baptist Church, people came in to give food as well as get it. Whatever they got in their house, the canned goods, uh, they bring in everything. You know, and they bring it to us and we open it up and we cook it for the rest of the people. That's, that's walking in. Whoever come in is welcome to whatever we got. The church's sanctuary was demolished by the storm, but on the day Katrina hit as the water rose, the upstairs community room became a different kind of sanctuary. We had a whole lot of elderly people in the church that we had to bring from the bottom stair up to the top floor. So, you know, me and the rest of the pastors here, we, we, we hung in here out through all the water, watch it rise and pray with them. And... Biloxi's high school is the main shelter, perhaps the only one in town. There's some water and food, but no electricity. And for a lot of desperate people, no information. I'm looking for my daughter and grandchildren. With phone service almost non-existent, many survivors sought desperately to reach family members. They don't know, so. So I can see that my family and my girls, I have one in Virginia, and the rest of my family is in California, my mom and everybody. Joseph Brooks was among the lucky ones. In the school parking lot, he managed to borrow a cell phone and, small miracle, get through to a sister in Missouri. She told me I ought to get down on my hands and knees wherever I'm at or was at, and thank God that I'm still sitting here <coughs> talking alive. In this America's Bible Belt, it's a sentiment we heard over and over as people told tales of narrow escapes, of rescues from rooftops and attics. I'd be insane without the Holy Ghost. It's the joy of God that keeps me going. That's what's gotten us through, you know. I mean, we literally, we hanging off that gutter for two and a half hours. We were all five of us praying, you know, saying, 
you know, please God, this is, give us our lives. Thank you so much. In a city preoccupied with survival, it will take some time to fully grasp the scope of this tragedy. It will take a lot more time to repair it. For months, perhaps years, relief work will take the place of casinos as Biloxi's economic lifeline.